Hey, Bobby. Hey, hey. Morning. How's it going? Fine. How are you doing? Good. Uh, you have a great background there. <laughs> Thanks. I've got a, <laughs> looks like a big old tree coming out of my head. I just noticed. Yeah, and then you can see my messy closet. I, I should have just got that out of the way. But, uh, Close the closet. Haven't we spent enough of our lives in there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Um, so, um, you know, how are, you know, how are you? How are you keeping spirits up? I'm good. I mean, I'm honestly kind of enjoying this. Uh -huh. Just the, the being home part, you know, with, with the success of Queer Eye and like as crazy as the last three years have done, you know, me and the boys usually do more in a week than one would do in like a year. So uh -huh. it's been kind of nice the last few weeks to just not have to leave home. But um, oh, yeah. other than that, I mean, I'm going a, a little stir crazy, going from a million miles a minute to zero. Um, uh -huh. So it's great doing things like this that force us to get out of bed at a decent time and do your hair and put on a yeah. shirt other than just a black t-shirt. Actually, you're wearing, <laughs> you're wearing my, my uniform every day. It's just everyone thinks I wear the same outfit every day. I'm like, I don't wear the same outfit. I just have a hundred of the same t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you just totally called me out on a black t-shirt and a black V. <laughs> I wear, this is my uniform. I mean, we work from home anyway, so, uh, but like now I, we just can't go out as often. Yeah. I'm like trying to grow facial hair and being Asian, it's really difficult. So I have like these patches of like whiskers so it, it's weird. Yeah, in, in 16 years, I don't think my husband's ever tried to grow one. I mean, I oh, really? he gets he gets a little a little stubble right here, and that's it. Other than that, he is baby faced. Yeah, <laughs> it's like this doesn't even connect. It's it just looks like I've been like randomly. The doing funny this. thing is, mine does, but right here for some reason, the hair gets bright blonde, like white oh. blonde. And oh. so it looks like it doesn't. So I actually put a little, put a little um, <laughs> eyeshadow <laughs> on the hair to make it darker. Otherwise, like on camera, it looks like it doesn't connect here. Oh, right on. Um, so, so it's the the sixth season of Queer Eye coming up, correct? Um, the fifth season is coming out soon. I don't know exactly when, but I know in in the next probably one to three months, given the past history of when they yeah. come out. Yeah. Um, and then we were here in Austin starting to film season six. Um, unfortunately, we didn't even get through one episode before production was shut down. But oh, we'll be back. I, yeah. Netflix that's is committed I, to finishing the season. That's what I was actually going to ask. Um, I was like, oh, are you in L.A.? Are you, are you So you're in Austin right now. Yeah, I, um, me and a couple of the other boys decided to stay in Austin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Anthony and Jonathan live in New York, which New York is a little crazy at the moment. So yeah. um, and I had a great Airbnb that I had prepaid for. So I'm like, might as well just stay here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because I actually am originally from Texas. So... I'm originally from Houston. Yeah. Oh, you are? Oh, that's yeah, right, that's yeah. Right. So I lived in Austin before moving to San Francisco and then LA. So um, it does look very Austin behind you. Nice live oak <laughs> behind me. Yeah, I, I actually really, really like Austin. I mean, I only got to experience what Austin has to offer for like four days before, you know, shit hit the fan. But other than that, like, you know, I'm still going on hikes here and there, like out in the middle of nowhere, away from people and just the city, I really like it here. You know, I hadn't been here since 1998 until this last month. So it's changed a lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, cause I know, I, of course I was supposed to go to South by Southwest. Oh, so you guys were there during that, like, of course. Yeah, I got here like March 4th, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was supposed to go to South by Southwest. I go there every year. It's such a, you know, and I lived in Austin maybe like 2004 to 2008 or something like that. Very so different. it's very different. That whole area, the downtown area, like none of that was there. No one wanted to ever go to the east side. So, but now it's just like, I, I love going back. Um, but it's, so you said you, I was going to ask you like when, the pandemic hit like you haven't you weren't really deep into production yet uh, um like, we well no. our our production team was i mean our <laughs> our crew had been here some of our crew had been here for over a month uh -huh. um getting pre-production ready getting location scouted um 
casting for all our heroes. So all of our heroes were already cast. Um, and we were, we were almost done with our first episode. We had like probably four hours left to film. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Um, well, that's, I mean, it's, it's good that you guys are staying there kind of uh, and keeping spirits up. And yeah. um, like, what made you, why, why Austin? I mean, why, why did, what made you guys choose Austin as the next city? So me and the boys have zero to do with any of those decisions. Okay. We don't have any say, we don't have any say where we go. We don't have any say in casting. And not that we're like, we don't have any say. It's, we actually don't want any, um, especially when it comes to do with casting. Like we don't, we don't want to know about the heroes before we meet them because we want our, our interaction and us getting to know them to be truly authentic and truly real and us truly learning about them. Um, we've actually learned that in the last season, we might have known a little bit too much about them when we'd be reading our dossiers. And this time around, we're actually going to know even less because we find that we really, we really do more investigation in, per in person when we know very little about them. Yeah. But yeah, when it comes to like the locations we go to, we have zero, zero say. I mean, we've all, <laughs> we've all been pushing for very cold climates because it's oh, so okay. hot everywhere we film. Yeah, you guys, it, it, there are a couple seasons where, you know, I, I see where you guys are at. You, a lot of the South. There's a lot of South. <laughs> and I, it, you could feel the heat. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> God, yeah, in Atlanta. I mean, looking back at season one and two, my skin was always just like the cover, color of a fire truck because it was oh. like triple digits, 100% humidity. Season five, though, um, it's in Philadelphia, and it was just as hot. There was one week where it was like 110 <laughs> degrees. That yeah. week happened to be in a location where the hero had no air conditioning. It was it was hot. Yeah. Well, Austin, this time of year, or like when you guys would film, it's actually pretty oh, decent, it's right? Beautiful. Yeah. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, we like had movie night outside last night, and we were like under blankets, and it was chilly, and it's. It is the most gorgeous weather here right now. Like, if it stayed, like, this year-round in Texas, I would move back to Texas. Yes. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I, what I miss most about Austin is I love going to Town Lake. I love walking. I mean, I don't know if they close that. I, oh, I, I think, think, yeah, there's a stay-at-home order right now. And I know a lot of people are still, like, I noticed last week I went to take a walk at the big park. Um, Z Ziggler Park, oh, oh, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I went around the trail to like try to stay away from people, and there were still people like playing volleyball together. And I'm like, oh, no, like that's not social distancing. Well, you know, the quicker we all like follow the rules here, the quicker this will be over. Yeah. Um. So, are you? binging anything i think that's kind of you, what everyone's doing oh I'm sorry I, you things. froze you froze right at are you oh oh wait. are you binging anything right now or watching films yes. uh, I, films? like how creative are you getting with entertainment um i am going back and watching things that i had thought i didn't want to watch anymore um I thought I was done with The Walking Dead after season 47, but alas, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> um, I binged Ozark, I think, in a day the other day. It's so good. Season oh, wow. three is so good. Um, the Lion, or The Tiger King. Oh, yeah. Have you not watched it? <laughs> it's amazing. The last five oh, episodes, I realized my face didn't move from this. It, it, like, I was watching it, and I was just like, I'm like, oh, wow, people are really obsessed. And I was just like, this seems like an SNL sketch in the very beginning. I was like, this, this, this can't be real. But I was like, I guess people like to buy big cats and do shit like this. <laughs> it's funny you should mention SNL because I just read an article the other day that they're going to do a movie and that they've cast Kate McKenna in it. I oh, think she's oh, yeah. going to play, I think she's going to um, play the, the other big cat rescue woman. Carol Baskin, yeah. Yeah, Carol, who they've all become these social media icons. And I look through my feed of Twitter on, on, on Instagram, there's memes, there's it's, it's just amazing. And how we are getting, <laughs> we have Tiger King to distract us from <laughs> everything that's happening right now. Yeah, not that it's not a brilliant documentary as it is, like just the fact that he was so obsessed with himself that he had so much footage of himself mm. that they were able to make a documentary about him without involving him. 
Yeah, I it's know. just mind blowing. It, it, it's it, it's just pretty damn wild. Um, so you know, with with that, you know, and of course, Queer Eye. Everyone could binge Queer Eye. That's there. Got, you've got <laughs> you've basically got five seasons because we have one through four, and then Japan, which didn't have a number. It was just called Japan. And then again, five should be out. I would say in the next couple months at yep. the most. Oh wait, but before I go go on that. How was it? I mean, I when you guys went to Japan, that it was it, you guys announced that I think right when I came back. Like, I uh, and so did you go to Tokyo? And yeah, we filmed in Tokyo. What was your experience like there? I've spent a lot of time in Japan. I absolutely love Japan. It makes my little Virgo heart sing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so organized and so clean, <laughs> and everything is on time, and everyone is so respectful of each other, and I love and uh, the minimalist design there is it's my favorite japan yeah. is, i could live in tokyo absolutely i uh, i um i i love tokyo but uh, i i don't know if this is a i i, I kind of like osaka a little bit better <laughs> osaka is like a smaller more digestible tokyo yeah yeah and all the food is in that one place yeah so uh i remember i went i just went i went for my birthday i just went alone kind of on this kind of thing. I was like, I'm just going to go alone, see how it is. I stayed in Shinjuku in Tokyo. And uh, I and then I took and then I took a day trip. No, I went to Osaka, took a day trip to Kyoto, went and stayed in Osaka. And I I was in love with it as well. And I remember we were in this, I was in the subway in Tokyo. And um, I was like, Oh, my God, I need to use the restroom really bad. But I don't want to use the subway restroom. But I went into that subway restroom. Wow. It was immaculate. <laughs> Probably even had a washlet toilet, didn't it? Yes, it did. I yeah. was just like, what's going on? What's going on? It, it's called respect. <laughs> the Japanese people respect each other. They respect nature. They, it's just, it's a culture of respect. They're, they wouldn't trash a bathroom because then that would affect other people coming in to use it. And mm -hmm. just, that's just so against their culture. Yeah. It's that's what I love about their culture is, you know, it's the largest city in the world for population. And I never once saw a piece of trash on the ground. Mm -mm. You don't, no. there, there aren't even trash cans on the side of the street because you wouldn't eat walking down the street. That's just rude. So no. you wouldn't have trash. And even if you do, you all carry a little bag in your yeah. bag and you take your trash home with you. Yeah. It's an, and it's like, I'm, I'm not, you know, and just the way, cause like, I think some like, um, uh, T Japan, they flattened the curve very, because it, it kind of, this whole thing that's happening right now, I personally believe it's teaching us a lot about empathy and teaching us a lot about respect. Like you were just saying, it's like, a, and that reflects in the Japanese culture because they were one, they were one of the first people to flatten the curve. They're respecting the rules. They, they're, uh, they, uh, they, they have so much responsibility and they're aware of their surroundings and the people around them and how their actions affect other everyone else's. Um, one of our local producers um, explained the culture to me a little bit in this way. When you're a child growing up in Japan, you're not taught how to be a good person. Mm. You're taught how to not be a bad person. Mm. But like doing this makes you bad. This is bad. Yeah. So it's like you learn like, all right, I won't I don't want to do that because that makes me a bad person. It's not like, oh, to be a good person, you blah blah blah. It's like here's all the asshole things that you can do that are gonna make you an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so as a child, you're like, oh, I would never just, you know, leave my trash. That would make me a bad person. So yeah, just their whole culture. I just love, love, love. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's funny because in Queer Eye, we were like, you know, <clears throat> when um oh, Yoko was like, oh my God, they, we hugged and it felt so good. And she's like hugging her friend Fukimu and like, they're like, oh, this hugging thing is so great. I'm like, actually now you guys actually had the right idea. No hugging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think yeah. that, again, I think it's like, it's no surprise that they were the first ones to flatten that curve. And, and you know, I think we, it's a good model to follow. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, I, I was just really, like, when I was there, just very kind of, I felt that, and even though there was a lot going on, I felt safe, I felt happy, yeah. uh, and I, I, I was eating. I, even going to 7-Eleven to get 
<laughs> the best, <laughs> the best foods. Um, <laughs> the best foods at 7-Eleven. Their um, egg salad sandwich, me and the boys were obsessed with that when we lived there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, what else, you know, how, how do you think Queer Eye, right, like, a show like Queer Eye speaks to what's going on right now? Uh, as far as the pandemic? Yeah, I think, yeah, especially in this kind of climate we're in. And it's like, you know, I, I, I recently wrote this whole thing about, you know, treatment that's uh, uh, hateful treatments against Asians and and just about empathy, because I know the show, I mean, there hasn't been an episode where I haven't at least teared up. There have been a bunch where I ball. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, how, how do you think this show is more than what people really think it is? You know, we always, well, I don't know, we, I, I like to say that we, uh, we get people on the show and we trick them into thinking they're getting new wardrobe hair and and a house, but in fact, mm -hmm. we're just using that to like get inside. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we're using those, those, you know, kind of frivolous and maybe quote unquote shallow makeovers that you used to, you know, when you think about the old kind of makeover shows that people think are a bit shallow, we're just using that as a trick to mm -hmm. like really affect change on the inside for them um, and to help other people see people that may not be like them in a different way and have empathy. And, you know, especially when our show first came out, we started filming, you know, right after the election had happened. And mm. everybody on both sides of the aisle hated each other and nobody was talking to each other. Anybody with a different opinion, you were just unfriending them. And we decided we wanted to show that people from all different walks of life, all different races, sexual orientations, political affiliations could all come together and still show each other love and still have empathy for each other. Um, and also the, the self-care, you know, taking time for yourself. We've got a lot of time right now. And I think it's a lot of time that we could really be using for self-reflection and, and for taking care of ourselves and teaching ourselves that it is okay to slow down sometimes. And, you know, maybe this is the universe's way of, of teaching us, you know, the world needs to slow down and take some time to think about each other and ourselves more. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, before I let you go, so a lot of us are going on these Zoom calls, Instagram Lives, meetings, everything like that. And I was, I was on like this like Zoom game night party last night. And I was just, we were having this huge discussion about backgrounds, you know, <laughs> like, and I know you are the resident, you know, decor person at Queer Eye. Uh, and I was just like, oh, maybe I'll ask, I'll ask Bobby, what's the best way? Because I know that my background looks like trash right now. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what are some of your suggestions? I know this is kind of like just a weird, shallow question, but I'm just like, I want to present myself well. Give me a, 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 a Instagram live background makeover. What would you say? First thing, always make sure that there aren't things coming out of your head. <laughs> That's okay. even though this tree right now kind of looks like it's coming up, but I mean, the fact that you can tell it's a tree, but things like that, even like when we're filming shows, you know, we're oh, we always our camera people are always making sure that there aren't things that look like they're just kind of like jutting out of our heads. Yeah. So the same okay. thing, even if that were to move to the side, I that the guitar in the background is actually very cool. Okay. Um, but just put it off centered or put yourself more off centered so that way you can tell it's not just like. Yeah a tail or a thing coming out of the back of your head. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, just, you know, close closet doors. <laughs> if, <laughs> if things are too much of a mess, do one of the Zoom backgrounds. You know, make I it know. look like you're on a beach. <laughs> you could actually also make your own, like, Zoom backgrounds. I mean, uh, I, I've never been really, I, I'll be honest, I've never been a real big fan of, like, seeing myself like this, you know? Because it, it always distorts or you're like, oh, am I looking okay? Do I look too oily? Um, but uh, now I'm slowly getting used to it. Um, and, uh, you know, the, for the foreseeable future, hopefully, you know, not too much in the future. This is how we're going to have to live. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 it would be good to do this with a, a fancy background. So, yeah, I'll, I'll keep... <laughs> <laughs> or like good. very collegiate. Maybe I should put like a shelf in the back with books and stuff. You could also, I don't know what your view is outside, but even having like the sky outside, 
-hmm. but then that makes you too backlit. So like mm -hmm. what I have right now is I have a ring light on behind my phone. Uh, I ordered so that a way, light, so. Yeah, that way I can have a nice pretty view from outside, but my face is still lit. So the right lighting can really affect yours as well. Yeah, cool. <laughs> well, Bobby, thank you so much for taking the time out to talk to me and my my guitar coming out of my head and, and all that. <laughs> And I, 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 there is part of me that is very jealous that you're in Austin right now because, I mean, I know restaurants are closed and everything, but there's so much good food there that you could probably, or you know, order order out or yeah. pick up. Um, like my favorites, I, I'm sure you've been there already, like Kirby Lane, Magnolia Cafe. No, <laughs> I didn't get to go you to any of those. Kirby no, Lane? I, I've heard of it. Kirby yeah. Lane, they have a Kirby queso. I don't know if you if, if you're down with that. Um, it's just I I I I, 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 I I'm from Texas, and so um, like going back. I mean, I don't know if I'll necessarily ever move back, but I I love the fact that I'm from Texas. If that makes sense, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you probably could yeah. relate as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've only I only got to go to Elizabeth Noodles and Bon Mi, and okay. then Joe's, our oh, okay. Joe's. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. Bobby, thank you so much. Stay safe. Stay in high spirits. Thank you. you know, continue doing what you do because you're touching so many people. You and the, and the other four guys do so many awesome things for not just the LGBTQ community, but for people who, you know, just need that little boost of self-esteem or just realize that they're worth something. So you guys do a lot. So thank you so much. Awesome. For thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Have love. a quarantine. <laughs> Bye. Bye.